basically again, same thing. Here we have e to the x. We know it cr that crosses at 0, comma 1. However, since we have a adding a 1 inside the exponent, that's shifting that whole graph over one unit to the left. So now that point that we knew, 0, comma 1, is now at negative 1, comma 1. Does everybody at least understand that? Right, because it's technically inside of the function, because it's in the exponent, right? Or as the power. And then over here, we have 2x minus 1. We're not going to use transformations here. We can just graph that. We're going down 1 and then up 2, over 1. Or you go left 1, down 2. OK. So now we've graphed both of the functions. I'm going to just x that one out there. And now we just need to go by our constraints. So this one is for values that are less than or equal to zero, or to negative one. So we go to negative one, which is right here, and we say, OK, it could equal this value, but nothing greater than negative one. So we're going to erase that. Does that make sense why I erased that function, that portion? Then over here, we're only going to do values that are greater than negative one. So here's negative one. Only values that are greater than negative one is going to be going down to here. And now we can just marry these two functions. So at negative 1, we have negative 1, 1. And that kind of looks like that. And then over here, we have negative 1, what looks like negative 1, 2, 3. And again, sorry, that's greater than negative 1, not greater than or equal to. So that's an open circle. So that's going to look something like that. Again, guys, the how perfect your piecewise function is not really my idea. It's making sure that you guys at least have the basic transformations as well as the uh, correct domains. Yes? Um, since the, the e of x plus 1, wouldn't that make it come closer to, to 1 instead of 0? Or is it still not closer to 0? What do you mean, over here? So the, yeah. Well, yeah, but it's still never going. It still has the asymptote at zero, so it's just being shifted to the left. So it's not going down. It's just being shifted to the left. Like, huh? Like, look at the graph. All I did here's the graph. Here's e to the x. The only difference between e to the x plus one. That's the only difference. It just got shifted to the left. So it's, it's going to get closer to 0, yes, than e to the x, but it still has an asymptote there. It's never going to approach it. Now let's go and talk about domain and range real quick. The domain, this is kind of interesting. The domain, as we go from the left, do 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 Oh, we've got to stop here, right? But it's included at negative 1. So when we jump down here where it's not included, that's OK, because the function is still included at negative 1. Does everybody see that? And then we can continue on our merry way. So our domain is from negative infinity to um, infinity. The range, though, we got to see. How low does this graph go? To negative 3, which is not included. Then the graph continues, keeps on going all the way up to infinity. Okay, So you will need to know how to do identify the domain and range from a graph as well. Okay. Lastly, let's go ahead and evaluate uh, a couple values. Let's do f of negative 1. And let's do f of 1. OK, at f of negative 1, we look at this graph. Which function is defined at f of negative 1? It's only one of them, though, right? You guys agree? Because guess what? If two functions were defined, would it still be a function? No. Only one, this one, e to the x. So you'd say e to the negative 1 plus 1, which equals e to the 0, which hopefully you guys remember anything raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. f of 1, so we go over to f of 1. Which function should we evaluate for f of 1? That one. So it equals to 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1. So I guess I didn't graph this correctly. Up to over 1, up to over 1. So it should be a little bit steeper of a graph. Okay. Cool? You guys want some hard ones? Yeah, we should probably probably pick up the 